What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video we're going to be demoing the Geo's Reef FMC Media Reactor Series. Now if you're not familiar with this, Geo's Reef is a sponsor of this channel and has helped create the 300 gallon in the background that you can kind of see there behind the table by providing the sump, calcium reactor, and ATO, custom red, white, and blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment. And if you're not familiar with that, definitely check out the 300 gallon playlist where you can see the ins and outs of that build. All right, so on the table here, we have the two different types and two different sizes of reactors. Now, if you're just looking for the reactor that you can uh, plumb into an existing manifold, or maybe you already have a maxi jet or another CJ pump laying around, and you just need the reactor, then you want to go with the 410 or the 415. So uh, either one of these would work perfectly fine with that. It just depends on how much media you want to use or kind of how big your sump is or what kind of room you have. Now these can be plumbed internally or externally and to give you an idea on the size here, uh, this 410 is about the same size of the reactors that came in with the 300 gallon reef and I only fill it up about halfway full of carbon every month. I don't use GFO or bio pellets and it's plenty big enough to take care of that 300 gallon tank. Now with the fittings it's about 13 and a half inches tall. Here on the uh, 415 we have about 18 and a half inches tall and the only thing that would really make me decide on which one to pick was if you guys remember the old 125 I had that 55 gallon uh, sump and I like to pump my reactor stuff back in just gravity feed pretty much so having the taller reactor would have been something I would have went with for that application but again it's going to depend on uh, what you have for a sump in your whole layout there so uh, this will definitely take care of a 300 gallon reef without a doubt if not bigger and I'm sure that this would go up to 600 or even higher depending on what media and how much you want to put in there so yes if you're just looking to uh, plumb a reactor to existing pipe, piping or a pump, these are the two you want to go with. Now if you're looking for something that's a standalone unit that can be plumbed uh, internally, then you're looking at the uh, 415P with the provided CJ pump. And that's going to be the one we're looking at today because we have the tank over here where we can check out the bio pellets, the GFO and the carbon. So let's go ahead and move into that reactor, I'll show you how to put it together and then we'll test out that media. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this reactor together. Now, these are the parts that we're going to use, but when you get them in the mail, they're going to be in this plastic film. That way, you don't have to go searching through the box to find anything. It's all going to be there. Now, to put this together, it's pretty quick. Let's go ahead and move some of these parts out of the way. Uh, you're going to first attach your CJ pump. It does come with an acrylic base, and uh, you're going to have two screws that you'll remove from the bottom of the reactor. Slide them through the hole here, and then screw it in place. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Line it up. Now I'm not going to tighten everything down because I want the person who wins this to be able to uh, finalize it the way they want and that way uh, I don't have to take it all apart to ship it either. So there we go in place and it moves around again you just have to tighten it down based on where you want it to be. Now the next thing you want to do is take the provided a barb fitting and what's really cool about this is Geo always sends out his fittings with the tape on it which seals the water in and uh, that's just a nice touch. It just speaks quality and attention to detail and it just makes you feel good so I like that kind of stuff and that's just something that always that he always does next thing you want to do is take the top fitting which actually goes here attach the provided half inch tubing put that in place up here uh, you can just tighten it down a little bit and then attach it to the pump now it does come with these fittings here that you can go ahead and uh, attach but I'm not going to do that again just for the sake of sending it out I want someone to be able to uh, put it together. Now the last part you have to do here is take the other side of the reactor, this fitting, slide it in, and then attach the provided uh, barb fitting. And now if you want to put this on uh, like hard PVC, you just have to go to Home Depot and get the other fitting. But uh, other than that, that's it. Pretty easy to put together. So let's go ahead and uh, take it apart, show you what's on the inside, how it works, and uh, test out some of the media. All right, to get inside this reactor, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is unscrew your unions. Now, of course, this is going to be the exit pipe here. Just unscrew that. And then you're going to do the input for the pump. Then you want to do is just loosen up these top screws. And then rotate and uh, lift up. That's it. Now, it does come with this built-in acrylic to stop any kind of media getting through, like the bigger chunks of carbon. But uh, really, we have the sponges and the internals here that we're going to look at next that really allow you to adjust what media you have. So just pull this out. This is how it's going to ship. Now, we're going to adjust this to work for all three types of media. So let's go ahead and move into that now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to use are bio pellets. These are just the standard ones off BRS. So I'm going to show you how to uh, set the reactor up and put them in the, uh, the chamber there. So 
This is how you pulled it out, just out of the box. Now what you want to do is go ahead and just take off the top, set it to the side. It has the uh, small acrylic here. We're going to use that piece again. We're going to take the other sponge out and then go ahead and move this down just a little bit. This is the bottom one. Now there's a little acrylic screw here. You're going to go ahead and pull this screw out all the way. Now this is just a locking screw. This keeps the bottom from falling out and then don't drop the screw. Uh, and then you're going to just pop that out. See? Just pulls out that whole piece right there and you're good to go. Now you can go ahead and take out this little rubber washer there and you're just left with the tube. Now you can see at the bottom of this tube there are little holes. Now what's cool about that is that's really where a lot of the flow is going to go out to help move the bio pellets just like this. So it's going to sit down here at the bottom and help mix the bio pellets up that way. Now since you have that all set what you want to do is go ahead and take the top here which will stop the bio pellets from when you first turn it on sometimes they shoot up with air bubbles and all sorts of stuff. You don't want them getting out of the reactor going into your sump so you'll go ahead and you can put this whatever level you want it to be and you can just set it down in there. Now there's a little hole that holds that in place which stops the flow at the bottom, okay? Now that's just gonna hold that in place there and then you can just reattach that, just like that, good to go. Now to load this up, all you have to do is take out, measure out the amount of bio pellets you're gonna use. I do have a whole video on how to use bio pellets somewhere in the beginner guide playlist. Let me just open this up. Now to fill this up with bio pellets, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and take your rod here and then save your top piece. You're gonna need that, your bio pellets. And then uh, you're just gonna go ahead and put the tube in have it to the bottom. It's going to stay in place because there's a little notch there that you guys will see in the reactor. Then just take your bio pellets, put your finger over the hole so you don't pour them down into the tube, and then pour in or measure in and pour in your recommended bio pellets. Once those are in the bottom, take your top here and then put it on the, uh, let's use your finger like this, and put it over the reactor tube and then slide it down wherever you want it to be. So you can see there that it holds it in place. Now the reason why you want to do it like that is you don't want those uh, bio pellets to get inside the tube and even and if you want you could always put the bio pellets in first and try to get the tube around them and mess with that. This is just the easiest way to do it. So after that you can either put a sponge on there if you want. It's up to you. I usually don't use a sponge but you can and then go ahead and put your top back on, twist it and then just attach everything as normal and you're good to go. Okay, once the reactor is in your sump and is turned on, all you have to do is adjust this ball valve to add flow or add water and flow to the reactor. So just go ahead and slowly turn it. You don't want to go crazy here. Just let it fill up. So I turned it probably, I don't know, halfway. A little bit more now that we got some water in there. We don't have to worry about shooting the bio pellets around. Go ahead and let some of that air get out. So it's slowly going to fill up and then we'll adjust the tumble of the bio pellets. We're just gonna wait for water to start coming out of the reactor. All right, we can see that there's water starting to come out of it now. So now you can just adjust how much you want them to tumble. And I'll give you guys a zoom in here in a second. You get a pretty good idea of how it tumbles so far. That's pretty decent for bio pellets, and that's not even up all the way. So that's full power. They're definitely tumbling, that's for sure. I personally wouldn't have them going that much, I think if I had this little amount in here, I'd probably dial it down so like something like that. It's not too uh, too aggressive, and that way you don't eat them up and they don't kind of rip each other to pieces. But uh, yeah, it works pretty good for bio pellets. Um, I wish I had more of them so I could fill the chamber up halfway to kind of see how it tumbles, but based just on that flow, there's definitely not going to be any issues taking care of the whole reactor. Uh, with that uh, that amount of flow, it's definitely pretty good. So let's go ahead and move over to um, GFO and carbon. Okay, so I went ahead and reassembled the uh, fittings here as if you were just taking it out of the box for the first time. Now to set up GFO, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and pull off the first sponge and the top. You will put both of these back on and then you just want to leave this the way it is. Now, what I like to do is go ahead and put this in the bottom or back into the reactor all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that the sponge is going to come up a little bit. Just go ahead and get that to go down. You're good to go. And then just measure out your GFO. We're going to use the rest of this since I don't use it here in the fish room anymore. And then again, just put your finger over the hole and pour in your GFO based on your water volume and where you're trying to keep your phosphates at. Now, if you get anything on the outside here, this is a good point here, is just make sure that's clean because of the rubber O-ring. Just make sure that's clean if you get any on there. Pull that stuff off, wipe it off, and you see that the GFO is on the bottom. Now, what you want to do is take the top, put 
place. Add your sponge. This will stop from any of the fine particles from getting in there. And then reassemble it just like you did before. That, and then tighten everything down. And then go ahead and put the pump end on. Now with GFO you like it to tumble. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and plug it in, fill her up, and then uh, see if we can get a good tumble. Okay, so let's go ahead and slowly fill it up. Cloudy for a little bit. Let that fill up and start draining out. Alright, so at this point, let's go ahead and adjust. See if we can get the tumble. I know that there's a little bit of water there from if I can angle that back so it doesn't show too much. Okay, so with GFO, you just want a little tumble. So that's too much. Bow down just a little bit. There we go. Give you guys a different angle to check it out. As you guys can see, the GFO works pretty well. Now, I went ahead and made some adjustments to the setup just because that was a little loud having it just kind of flowing in there. So I added a little bit of piping. And now it's quiet. So let's go ahead and move over to the carbon, which is the uh, last medium I'm going to show you for this reactor, and then we'll go ahead and give them away. Okay, just like the other two examples, we're going to go ahead and start as if you just pulled it out of the box. And here we go. Now, what you want to do for carbon is just go ahead and take off the top, the sponge, and the uh, acrylic fitting there, or acrylic top, and then you're good to go for that. Just go ahead and put this in the reactor, just like you did with the GFO. Place the sponge down to the bottom and then take your carbon, whatever you want to use. I'm just using ROX 0.8. And then we'll just go ahead and put in, uh, we'll do one cup. Finger over the hole, just like before. And we'll do a little bit more. All right, good to go. Set this to the side. And then just like the GFO, instead of um, we're going to put the cover on, but instead of putting this first, we're going to take the sponge part first. We're going to put that in and slide it all the way down to the carbon. Put the top on. Slide it all the way down. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit because of how the, uh, fitting, the fitting is there. All right. Now what you can do is go ahead and lift this up to make it easier. If your hands aren't too big or whatever, and then just, there you go, hold on the tube, hold it in place, so that your carbon is kind of squished in between the two sponges and held in place with the two acrylic tops and bottom, and then you can go ahead and slide it all the way down, put your top on, again, make sure all the uh, screwed on, alright. Add your pump. Then go ahead and put it in your sump. All right, now that the reactor is in our sump and our pump is on, let's go ahead and turn it on. Now you wanna go slow with this, just depending on how much carbon you have. I found the more carbon I have, I have to go slower with adding the water, just so you don't add too much pressure underneath and lift up that top acrylic, uh, I guess, spacer or whatever you want to call in there that holds the sponge in place. You don't want to lift that up and cause a gap in the uh, carbon, which will make it kind of, you know, bounce around, which you don't want carbon to do. So just go slow. Let it fill up. This is a good pace for this. And, uh, yeah, it should be good to go. It's going to be, it's going to clear up. And then you can just adjust the flow rate to whatever you want. Now, there's going to be a lot of bubbles depending on the carbon you have. And it just takes a few minutes. It should be good to go. Let's go ahead and see it coming out of the hose here. And that's it. A few extra bubbles are going to come out of the carbon, but that's normal. 
and then you just adjust the float or whatever you want. I usually keep it about halfway. I don't really put a lot through my carbon. I don't feel a need just because it's always running. Eventually all the water it will get through the reactor one way or another. So I don't use a lot of flow. That's about good for me. I, could, I guess I would say that's maybe a couple hundred gallons per hour at that. Again, I don't use a ton of flow. Well, as you guys can see, the reactor worked out really well with the bio pellets, GFO, and carbon. And you can definitely fit a lot more in the chamber than what I showed you guys in this video. So with all that said, let's go to move on to the last part of this video. I'll show you guys the frag racks and then it will give everything away. All right, let's go to take a quick look at the frag rack. So it's gonna be 19 holes ready to go for you to put your frags in there for whatever you do in your tank. Now they're pretty easy to put together. All you're gonna do is take uh, the two top fittings here and uh, put them together however way you want. All right, so holds that in there. This is where it's gonna sit on top of the tank and then your acrylic rod will go through here. Just tighten it down. And then you can put your frag rack through there and of course tighten it down. It allows you to adjust it any way you want. Height wise, you can move it any way you want through there. And of course, uh, you can change the angle to fit your tank however way you want it to sit in there. So they're really easy to use, definitely cool. And uh, I like the design on it. It doesn't take up too much room and it's a perfect way to hold frags in your tank. So definitely check these out. I will be giving away four of these here in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and get into how you can win one of these reactors or the frag racks. Now, there are four frag racks and three reactors. Now, it's pretty simple. Just head over to the Instagram account of Geo's Reef as well as his Facebook page. Drop him a like and tell him that Fish and Hex sent you. And then I want you to come back over to here in the comment section. I want you to tell me what you would like to be put in to win. So if you want to try to win either one of these reactors and a frag rack, just simply type, I want to win uh, Geo's Reef FMC 415P, FMC 415, FMC 410, and a frag rack. So if you want to put in to win either one of those, you can go ahead and type that in the comment section. And then Monday, I will announce the winner by doing the random name picker. Now, one thing I do want to mention, this is going to be a U.S. only uh, giveaway just because the shipping overseas is ridiculous. And I think anybody who has done it uh, in the past can agree that it's pretty crazy how much it costs to send something overseas at least from the United States. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be US only, so I do apologize for that. But definitely head over to Geo's Reef and give him a, a shout out and tell him that I sent you because I know he will appreciate the love and support through that. Now, uh, when it comes to the giveaway, you can only win one of the products. So you can put in to win all four items, but if your name gets drawn twice, I will draw it again to try to get somebody else and to spread the love. So you can only win one item, but you can put in to win either one of the four. All right, so good luck, and I'll see you guys Monday to announce the winner.